Good morning. We're so glad you're here with us at Timber Ridge Church Online. My name is Nick, and I'm one of the lead pastors here at Timber Ridge. Today, we're kicking off a brand new series for the new year called Depth Defined. Depth. What is depth, actually? Well, the dictionary defines depth as the quality of being intense or extreme, or complexity of profound thought. We hear people use the concept of depth all the time. People say things like, she's such a deep thinker, or that was such a deep concept, or they have such a depth about themselves. And people talk about depth when it comes to spiritual things too. Some people might say, well, I just want to grow deeper spiritually, or I'm just searching for spiritual depth. Well, when it comes to following Jesus and living out our faith in everyday life, what does depth really look like? What does spiritual depth mean? That's what we're going to discover together over the next few weeks. Let's start off today by looking at what depth is not. Depth is not an emotion. For some people, depth is an emotion. If they teared up and they were moved during a sermon, then it was deep. But listen, I cry at the end of the movie Rudy when he's carried off the field at Notre Dame. That doesn't make it deep. Or some people think that depth is an academic or informational pursuit. For some people, depth is all about an academic pursuit of how much spiritual knowledge they can obtain. But that's not necessarily depth. Think about it. Who were the people who were most knowledgeable of the scriptures when Jesus walked the earth? It was the Pharisees, the ones who killed Jesus. Yeah, I don't think that's very deep. And then depth is not confusion. You see, for some people, depth is just confusion. In other words, if I can't understand the teaching or the principles, then it must be really deep. That's usually because we know if we're confused, we can't actually be expected to do anything with what we've been taught. That's not depth. Depth is always simple, not confusing. Real spiritual depth will always be clear enough to be applicable. You know, the English language can be really funny at times. There's all these words and phrases and rules, and then there's hundreds of exceptions to every rule. It's crazy. And think about the words in our language that are contronyms. A contronym is a word that has two meanings, and the meanings contradict one another. Words like strike. In boxing or fighting, it means to hit something. But in baseball, it means to miss what you're trying to hit. Or trim. When you trim your hair, you remove hair. But when you trim a Christmas tree, you add to it with decorations. Or bound. If you jump in your car bound for Dallas, it means you're moving toward Dallas. But if you're bound in the sense that you're tied up with ropes, it means you're restrained from moving at all. Or custom. Custom can mean a tradition or common practice shared by many people. Or custom can mean something that's unique and one of a kind. There's another one I thought of as we kick off this new year. It's discipline. Discipline can mean one thing when you hear the word as a kid. It means something someone does to you as punishment or correction due to a wrong that's been committed. But discipline has another meaning too. It means that you train yourself in an habitual way toward something good. So what does that have to do with defining depth? Well, here it is. We will never have spiritual depth apart from spiritual discipline. Here's what depth is. The discipline or commitment to follow Jesus in whatever he teaches and wherever he leads. The Bible actually talks about that. Jesus actually talks about that in Luke chapter 6, verse 46 through 49. Jesus says, so why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord, when you don't do what I say? I'll show you what it's like when someone comes to me, listens to my teaching, and then follows it. It's like a person building a house who digs deep and lays the foundation on solid rock. When the floodwaters rise and break against that house, it stands firm because it's well built. But anyone who hears and doesn't obey is like a person who builds a house right on the ground without a foundation. When the flood sweeps down against that house, it will collapse into a heap of ruins. Jesus is teaching a large crowd of people here, and he says, If you want to know what it means to have depth, it's found in obeying the foundational teachings of Jesus. Depth is found in our simple yet radical obedience 
to the foundational teachings of Jesus. Doing what Jesus says, when he says to do it, it doesn't get any deeper than that. And so today we're kicking off this series talking about two of the most important spiritual disciplines that lead to depth, prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting are two of the most powerful Christian disciplines in all of our faith because through fasting and prayer, the Holy Spirit can transform our lives. Here's what the Bible says about fasting and prayer. In Ezra chapter 8, verse 23, it says, So we fasted and earnestly prayed that our God would take care of us, and He heard our prayer. In Joel 2, verse 12, it says, That is why the Lord says, Turn to me now while there is time. Give me your hearts. Come with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Throughout God's Word, time and time again, we see that prayer and fasting are foundational to growing in our relationship with God and acknowledging our dependence on Him instead of our own power or our own control. Through the discipline of prayer, we connect ourselves with God. Through the discipline of fasting, we disconnect ourselves from the world. Prayer and fasting, what are those disciplines really? Prayer. Well, here's what the Bible says in Philippians 4, 6. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He's done. 1 John chapter 5, 14 says, This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5.17 simply says this, Never stop praying. All of this teaching about praying, well, what is prayer? Prayer is spiritual communication between us and God. It's two-way communication. It involves both talking and listening. And a lot of times we feel like we can't pray because we don't know what to say. We think we need some special secret language or some super spiritual holy rhetoric to communicate with God. But that's just not so. Prayer simple. If you're trying to impress God with your vocabulary, approaching Him with some super sophisticated spiritual rhetoric, you're missing the point. The point of prayer is that we broken humanity and all of our mess and failures and struggles can communicate with the living God who is the creator and controller of all. Prayer isn't about us impressing God. It's about bringing needs to God, acknowledging that He's the one who can meet them. It's about bringing pain and hurt to God, admitting that He's the one who can heal them. It's about bringing sin to God, confessing that He's the one who can forgive it. It's about bringing thanksgiving and praise to God, showing that He's the one who provided. So don't don't worry about if you don't know exactly what to say. Just start talking to God, listening for His voice on a regular basis so that you can be in tune with His will and His way for your life. Prayer is simple communication with God about every single area of our lives because He cares about it all. If it matters to you, It matters to God, so talk to Him about it. So we bring everything that matters, every situation, every need, every relationship, every struggle, every praise, every circumstance, we bring them all to God in prayer. But we know this, prayer doesn't always change my circumstances, but it can always change my perspective. Even Jesus, who was God in the flesh, practiced the habit of regular communication with God the Father. In Luke 22, toward the very end of Jesus' life, in verse 39, we read these words. It says, Then, accompanied by the disciples, Jesus left the upstairs room and went, as usual, to the Mount of Olives. There he told them, Pray that you will not give in to temptation. He walked away about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed. Catch what the Bible says here. It says that Jesus went to the Mount of Olives to pray as usual. This was his habit. It was his customary routine. Jesus is about to be crucified. He's about to be brutally murdered on the cross. He's about to face the most painful, challenging, difficult thing he's ever faced. And he knows what's coming. And so what does he do? He does what he has always done. He goes and prays. He goes and communicates with his Father. In the shadow of his most difficult task, Jesus knew the importance of connecting with the Father through prayer. 
Why? Because when prayer is our habit, we can face hard things. If we want spiritual depth, it starts with a foundation of prayer. And then there's fasting. What is fasting? We hear about fasting in our culture some these days. Things like intermittent fasting that are weight loss methods and have health benefits. But what is spiritual fasting? Well, here it is. Fasting is giving up something, usually food, for a period of time so that you can focus your thoughts and attention on God. Fasting helps us disconnect from the things of the world to give our attention to the things of God. We see it throughout the Bible. In Daniel chapter 9, verse 3, Daniel writes these words, Then I turned my face to the Lord God, seeking Him by prayer and pleas for mercy with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Daniel was a follower of God, and he was facing some real life and death, super serious challenges in his life. And when Daniel was facing challenges or needing to draw close to God and hear from God for a specific need in his life, he did what many people did throughout the Bible. He turned to prayer and fasting. Why? Because fasting helps us to disconnect from the world, and prayer helps us to connect with God. And so maybe you're thinking, how do I know when I should fast? Well, here's when we should fast. Anytime we feel the need to connect with God and disconnect from the world. And what does it look like to fast? Well, in its basic form, fasting is giving up something from the world in order to focus our attention on God. Here are some examples. Maybe for you that means a traditional biblical fast where you give up food and you just go on liquids for a certain amount of time. Or maybe you give up a specific food for a specific time. I did this back in September where I fasted from red meat and any foods with sugar for a month. Or maybe it's not food. Maybe you choose to fast from something else that takes up a lot of your time and has become a big distraction in your life. Maybe you fast from social media. We could all use that, right? Or maybe it's secular music or something like TV and movies. Here's the point. You give up something that's a pleasure and that can take your time and attention away from God in order to refocus your attention on Jesus and His work and direction for your life. Why would we do that? Because of what we said at the beginning. We will never have spiritual depth apart from spiritual discipline. If we want to grow closer to Jesus and know Him more, it starts with following the foundations He's given us. Listen, I love Google. You know, you can find anything in the world by Googling it. When I was preparing this message, I got to thinking about Google and about New Year's resolutions. You want to lose weight? All you have to do is Google it, and there are tons of weight loss programs and plans available right at your fingertips. Want to exercise more? Just Google it. You can find exercise plans and workout videos all designed to make you healthier and stronger and better physically. Want to read more? Just Google the topic of your choice, and you'll discover lists and lists of books that you can read. Want to eat healthier? Google it. The recipes you'll find for healthy eating are endless. You want to get more financially stable? Google's got your back. Just Google smart financial decisions and you'll have great advice right at your fingertips. But you can do all of that and you know what won't happen? Your life really won't change. Because if you just search for healthy recipes, but don't start actually cooking healthy and eating healthy, it won't matter. If you just read about exercise plans but don't actually get up an hour earlier each morning and do the physical activity, it won't be any better. If you just read about good financial decisions but never make a budget and stick to it, you're not going to grow financially. Here's the truth. We can have all the information in the world, but if we fail to put it into practice, we'll never grow. If we want to get better, we have to move from belief to behavior from knowledge to action. So here's my challenge to us today. Starting today, as a church family, we're going to start a 21-day prayer and fasting challenge. It starts today and it goes through the end of the month. Sunday, January 31st, here's how it works. We'll have a church-wide prayer focus each day that we ask you to pray for. You can find the prayer guide at timbridgechurch.com 21 days. And for the next 21 days, we're going to join together and pursue depth not just knowing what we need to do, 
but by actually doing it. For the next three weeks, here's what we'll do. Number one, we'll set aside a specific time to pray each day. Follow the prayer guide. Add your own prayers in as well. Spend time communicating with God each day. And then number two, choose a fast. You may want to do a fast that involves food, or maybe for you, you need to disconnect from the world by choosing to fast from something like social media or TV or something else that's become a huge distraction in your life. Pick something that helps you disconnect from the world so that you can instead use that time to focus your attention on Jesus and His plan for your life. And together, let's go on this journey of pursuing Jesus more deeply. We'll be better for it. Not because we know what to do, but because we actually take the steps to be spiritually disciplined and build the foundation of faith in Jesus into our lives. Let's pray. God, help us not just to know the things we should do, but to take the deep step of actually doing what you teach us to do. God, help us to incorporate spiritual disciplines in our life because we want depth. We want to follow you at a deep level. We want to know your way for our life more. We want to know your plan and your will for our lives more. And so help us, Jesus, to be disciplined to know you more so that we can follow you more closely and we might spread your hope and love to a hurting world all around us. We ask all these things in your life-giving, life-changing name. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us today. Go check out timberidgechurch.com slash 21 days and join us on this journey. Have a great week.